Man, I'm not, I'm not even going to reveal the whole game show until the day of and shit like that. That, that was kind of fun. No, it was not. Huh? And I got to I gotta go through the whole losers list just to get back to where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I got to run through all these losers, the losers bracket, just to beat all these niggas to, just to get to where I need to come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you funny. <laughs> <sighs> Man, I thought I got suspended again. I'm just like, yeah, all right, I don't got time for this shit. Mm-mm. It was right when you called me. I was looking over my shelf. I was like, oh, wait, I'm not even suspended no more. Right? Yeah, because it was some fucking bullshit. <laughs> Happen on my fucking best behavior. Shit. Are you bugging? All right, so what's going on in the news? So, Good Times Netflix show is coming on this week, this month. Man, I saw that shit. That shit looked horrible. How do you even green, green light that damn show? <laughs> That's a good question. Crazy. So Puffy pretty much is, was spending time with his daughter and everything like that too. Was he, was he molesting her too? <laughs> ah. Beyonce's country album is 27 songs, which we're going to talk about that next week. Oh, Lord. Yeah, we're going to talk about that one and Rock Marciano's album next week too. Mm. What's up, Mike? What's up, everybody in the chat? Yeah, DJ Premier talking about that album. That's how big it is right now. CNN, yeah. That's crazy. So Primo's on the album, too? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He's from Texas. Beyonce and Primo, that's interesting. That would be some shit. Uh, we're going to start this in about 10 more minutes. And we we talking about one of my favorite Queen albums tonight. How was your Easter, by the way? It was cool. I hear you. Y'all, I actually went out of town to Fayetteville and stuff like that, too. So Ashley came down to came down to town this weekend too. Shout out to Ashley. Fuck, where is it at? Everyone's saying no Diddy instead of pause now. <laughs> That's his legacy now. No Diddy. Goes on quick music and shit, apparently. Well, Sam, how you doing? 
Oh, thank God. Found it. Whew. Thought I lost my clone for a minute. Did you hear um, color, color tape stuff yet? You didn't hit me up yet. Oh, these weekends get more faster every fucking week. I felt like yesterday was just Friday. Bad Boys. I didn't see the Bad Boys 4 trailer yet. I didn't see it. Yeah, that looks good. What I've seen so good? Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the first trailer. From what I've seen, then they get they get set up by somebody and they on the run. Okay. So it's like, the, I think the captain, the, somebody framed the, their captain for something. Of course. And they got to they gotta prove his innocence and, and they on the run. From like uh you know the feds and shit. Okay, it kind of sounds promising. Yeah. I think Tiffany Haddish is in it, but she's not in the trailer. Oh Tiffany Haddish is in the movie? Oh yeah. Wow. I don't I don't know what character she plays. They, they don't have one in the trailer. So are you excited to see that one or uh, Beverly Hills Cop Four? Mm. I just hope they're good at this point. <laughs> I don't right. know. Cop, cop 4, I don't know what they're going to do with that outlook. I think they released that trailer too early, too. Yeah, because they're still working on the movie. Yeah. Like, nobody's talking about it. Well, at least it's not a kid movie from Eddie Murphy. Because that Candy King, Candy King Lane, whatever that shit was, I didn't really care for it too much. I know. I'm surprised that he's still making Ghostbusters movie. That's what I'm surprised about. I heard that's that's not get, it's getting like mixed reviews for that one. I'm not surprised because the best Ghostbusters were the first two. Yeah, I agree. But it's gotta be better than the one with Leslie Jones. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> they need they need to connect them though. They need to connect that one to the original. You know. I'm gonna just start whenever you are. Ten people are here. Good. Let's get it while the iron's still hot. What's up, YouTube? How's everyone doing this lovely, lovely, lovely day? This is your boy Reg in the building. Smooth motherfucker. Hard to welcome in the YouTube, and I'm not actually suspended. I got my homeboy Try in the building with me. Yep. Um, Trap the gangster, light skinned gangster, whatever you want to call him. Try the goat. Rest so, in peace, Nipsey. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. Oh yeah. Five years right here, man. A legend. Yeah, speaking of rest in peace, um, rest in peace to Lou Gossett Jr. too. You know what I'm saying? He actually passed away this past Friday. You know what I'm saying? For those who don't know who Lou Gossett Jr. is or was, you know, he was an actor. He was actually the first African-American to win for a best supporting role for the officer and a gentleman. He also mm -hmm. won an outstanding lead actor in a single appearance in a drum or comedy series with Roots. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was in a lot of great movies like The Principal. You know, he was in motherfucking um Palma Town, USA, Touch by an Angle, Touch by an Angle, Angel, excuse me. Most recently he was in um uh, The Color Purple. I think that was like one of his last roles before he passed away. That's why I did know. <sighs> but yeah, don't don't mention Diddy with Lucas Jr. But yeah, man. Um, rest in peace, Lou Gossett Jr. 
um very 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 dope actor also okay so on this day in rock music i actually found a rock album for a rock review and stuff like that too so we're going to highlight led zeppelin with their seven studio album presence this came out on swan song records which was their own record label in 1976 um, so this album kind of came out one year after Physical Graffiti, and this came out during a turbulent time for the group because Robert Plant was um in a car accident, like around this time and shit like that. And what had happened was it was like um he was pretty much paralyzed for a good minute. So um Jimmy Page wanted to rush release an album and stuff like that too, you know, just to prove that they can still do stuff like in despair. And coming forth, it comes this album, which pretty much this album was pretty much recorded. It was like one of the fastest albums they've ever recorded. They did this like literally like November of 1975. It didn't come out until March 31st in the United States, but it came out until April 2nd in the UK. This was known for songs such as um, Achilles' Last Stand, which, spoiler alert, that's actually my favorite song on this album. Nobody's Fault But Mine, Royal o Orleans. Um, I remember when I first heard this album years ago, I really didn't really like this album. Like the first two, the last two Led Zeppelin albums, I had mixed feelings about, but this one is a bit more better than In Through the Outdoor because this has some of Jimmy Page's best guitar work and production. I feel like this album kind of gets a little slept on. Unfortunately, it's like the last, the least selling album and stuff like that too, you know what I'm saying? Because it came out literally one year after Physical Graffiti. And Physical Graffiti, to many people, was like the peak of Zeppelin and shit like that, too. So, have you ever heard any al anything from this album or no? I haven't heard that one. Yeah, man. Um, I was actually thinking about re-reviewing like, the last two Led Zeppelin albums. Because I finally got both of them in my collection. So, I'm going to probably do that before this year's over, eventually. That's Led Zeppelin Presents, 1976. Happy anniversary. So continuing on with our Queen reviews, we're going to talk about their next album, their sixth studio album, News of the World. This album came out October 28, 1977 on EMI, which is under Electra Records. For those who don't know who Queen consists of, it consists of Freddie Mercury, Brian May, John Deacon, and Roger Taylor. Um, singles I was known for are We Are the Champions, We Will Rock You, Spread Your Wings, and It's Late. This was produced by Mike Stone, which I want to say this is actually the second album that he's done with them. I think the first one was literally um, The Day at the Races and stuff like that, too. Well, no, 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 scratch that, scratch that, because he was an engineer. This is really like the first time like, he's actually doing production and stuff like that, too. So. so last week we talked about A Day at the Races. After the release of that album, you know, they were pretty much getting ready to work on this album after you know they finished up on tour and everything like that too and around this time 1977 happened and you had a lot of new music styles emerging like the disco and you had of course punk rock and punk rock was like the new form of rock music that was like a middle finger to the anti-establishment of what was going on because you know Progressive rock was really starting to get more popular in the mid-70s, but then you had acts like the Sex Pistols that were pretty much, you know, just saying that how that was more passe and everything like that, too. And speaking of the Sex Pistols, they actually was like a, influ a somewhat of an influence for this album because literally they there was issues between, like, and issues between Sid Vicious and Freddie Mercury. But before I get into that, they did have a few similarities and they crossed paths, like the groups. For one, um, Queen in December of 1976, they were supposed to appear on a London talk show called Today. But um, Freddie Mercury had to go to the dentist, so they had to skip that gig. So they booked the Sex Pistols. And at that time, the Sex Pistols were like up and coming. This was like one year before never mind the bullocks came out which that came out the same year and i actually do have that album in my collection that's actually the only album they came out with and um you know it's kind of crazy too because uh, it's been stories that brian may wanted johnny rotten to do background vocals um 
background vocals for some songs on News at the World. And Roger Taylor, just like Freddie Mercury, did not like Sid Vicious and everything like that too, you know what I'm saying? Because Sid Vicious was just, you know, drugged up at that time. He, he, he was pretty much like a detriment, let's just say that. You know what I'm saying? And Sid Vicious and Freddie Mercury got into a fight actually like around 77. And pretty much, you know, um, Sid Vicious came into Queen's control room because they were actually at the same studio working on their albums. And Sid Vicious said, and I quote, have you succeeded in bringing ballet to the masters? You know what I'm saying? And pretty much um, that got into an escalation, which resulted in Freddie Mercury actually throwing Sid Vicious out of the studio and everything like that, too. So look up that story because it's actually a pretty interesting story. But the two, um, the two, from what I looked up, they kind of like, you know, buried the hatchet and stuff like that, too. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I kind of say like the Sex Pistols and punk music was an influence when it came to this album was because of the fact that around this time, a lot of like diehard Queen fans thought they were kind of losing their hard rock edge, like compared to like their earlier albums, especially with like the rising emergence of punk music and everything like that too. And like how progressive music was kind of, progressive rock was kind of losing like its popularity because like a lot of progressive rock acts kind of like either soften up the tone and try to appeal to more disco or they just generally just wanted to do like more harder rock or it was just kind of some of them were just going all over the place let's just say that right now you know what i'm saying um and so fast forward to 1977 that's when they came out with this album right here you know what i'm saying which was pretty much a more harder rock album so the album cover right here is pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? It just has like a little robot, a little robot here and stuff like that, which was, um, it was actually from a sci-fi artist named Frank Kelly Fryers and everything like that too, you know what I'm saying? And this is pretty much his base off the illustration from this magazine called Astounding Science Fiction. And most famously in this day and age, Family Guy, Family Guy did an episode in like the latter seasons. I forgot what season it was, but there was a subplot where Stewie was looking through vinyls with Brian and he saw this album. And Stewie was very scared by the album cover with the robot and everything like that too. So Brian was just doing his best to scare, scare Stewie by just showing his album cover and everything like that too, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, y'all can actually see a clip on YouTube. So yeah, this is the album cover right here. That's what the insert looks like. Okay, and this is what the vinyl looks like too. So yeah. All right. So this album has 11 songs. You know what I'm saying? So let's get right into it. Track number one is We Will Rock You. We Will Rock You, which is one of Queen's most signature songs, in my personal opinion. This is, might be the first Queen song that I've heard, honestly. Everyone knows that drum be like, bum, 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 bum. Everyone knows that drum beat, which um, Brian May said that that song came from him from a dream. A lot of songs he was dreaming about, he made to fruition. That was good drugs they were taking. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's kind of crazy, too, because this was actually the song that Sid Vicious actually interrupted Queen recording and stuff like that, too. You know what I'm saying? So while well, they were actually recording this song. Um, this was a, it's a classic rock song, period, in my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was pretty much Brian May's idea to make the, the stomp, stomp, clap, pause measure and everything like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, very, 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 very classic song. One of the best songs, period, that they've ever done. Hey, this is great classic record. It's been used in, uh, you know, sporting events, boxing, NBA, NFL, all over. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's one of this 
when they're singing some songs and you know just and it's like you know you don't even it, they don't even need like a drum beat for that they just you could just stomp and clap and that was the beat right there you know what i'm saying and, and it was great you know i'm saying definitely one of my favorite records of all time for them definitely next track we are the champions now this was written by freddie mercury um this song right here pretty much is like the companion piece to we will rock you which is always played together most likely like in tours um concerts and everything like that too you know what i'm saying um and of course which is it's the companion piece the b-side and everything like that too you know what i'm saying so very 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 dope song this is vintage queen right here the operatic kind of sounds you know what i'm saying um love 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 this record another another signature song from them that was used in sporting events you know when when the lakers won they played this you know um hockey all over it's like it's like a sporting theme song you know what i'm saying it's, it's a sports theme song and you know, it, when you carry it, just it just give you a a championship mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the best of the best. If you feel like you're the best at whatever you do, that's the song for you. You know what I'm exactly. saying? And, and I love the I love when Kanye West has sampled this. You know, for the Dream Team album, and it's just iconic, an iconic record from Queen. If you don't know this if, they, if you don't know these first two then you don't know queen but this this to me defines their career with these two songs right here you know what i'm saying this is their signature songs there's nothing else these are their signature songs not bohemian rhapsody none of that other shit. these two songs right here every queen fan should know i agree i definitely agree with you about that because this is definitely one of those songs that it is beyond queen you know what i'm saying i love bohemian rhapsody don't get me wrong but these two songs right here fire 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 but surprisingly those are not my favorite songs on this album so i'll get more into that in a minute next track is a uh, sheer heart attack now yes this is actually an outtake from the album sheer heart attack you know what i'm saying and they didn't actually finish it on time so they finished it for news of the world this was done by Roger Taylor, you know what I'm saying, who actually done the lead on a demo. And like I said, Roger Taylor, he was definitely more utilized when it came to like the more harder rock songs, which is surprising too, because he only did really two songs from this album. Like by did, I mean, he wrote two songs from this album. You know what I'm saying? I love the chorus and everything like that. You know, sheer heart attack, you know what I'm saying? Like definitely a very, very, very heavy song from them. Yeah, this is dope. Um, I love the guitars in it, the drums. You know, dope record. I definitely agree with you about that. Next track is um All Dead All Dead. Um excuse me. But <coughs> This <coughs> this one was a Brian May song, pretty decent song. It's like one a ballad and everything like that too. Um, not really one of my favorites from this album, but definitely a pretty decent song which utilized Brian May's vocals and guitar work a lot. I think it's dope. I love it. I love the bass line on this, the, the drums, the, the guitars. One of my favorite records on this album. Right. I forgot to say, he actually wrote this about the death of his childhood cat, too. So I forgot to mention that. But yeah, song. Um, next song we got is Spread Your Wings. You know what I'm saying? Which is another very, very, very dope track when it comes to Queen. A fire track right here. It tells a story about this guy named Sammy, who was a janitor and stuff like that. And he dreams of like improving his life. 
and his boss always tells him he has no ambition he'll never be anything and everything like that too and it's kind of interesting too because this is actually one of the few queen songs that was actually done in like a third third person narrative and everything like that too you know what i'm saying so very very dope it's actually written by john deacon no surprise there um his songwriting was definitely getting a lot more um better as the albums went on i really can't wait to get into those the game in hot space i really can't wait to get into them but i'm getting way ahead of myself so yeah this one was another favorite of mine yeah yeah uh spread your little wings and fly away definitely i love that joint the beat the guitars on it this is fire definitely all right next song we got is um fight from the inside this was the other song written by um roger taylor and whatnot which this is probably my favorite track he's ever done on a queen queen project like period this is just nasty rock and roll hard rock right here in my personal opinion and again he always does the hard rock right when it comes to um the queen of repertoire and he actually did the lead vocals on this track too he kind of reminds me a little bit vocally of like roger daltrey i don't know something about him just reminds me of roger daltrey from the who and everything like that too you know what i'm saying so um yeah this one was a very dope track definitely you know had a real sinister bass line to it the drums yeah were good the, um really hard track i like it definitely love, love it next track get down make love my favorite track on the album and yeah this is definitely one of my earlier queen songs that i've actually heard growing up you know what i'm saying um it's probably it's not only the, one of the most experimental albums but it's experimental songs but it's actually their most sexually explicit song in my personal opinion you know what i'm saying it the beat was very like trippy psychedelic unorthodox for queen and then everything like that too and this is a band that really went unorthodox with this style so it's very rarely that they would go to like this like psychedelic funk that you'll probably hear from like early funkadelic you know what i'm saying um freddie mercury did his thing in one of my favorite vocal performances he's ever done you know what i'm saying i love the line where he says um um i can squeeze make love you can shake me i feel when you break me come on so heavy when you take me you make love you make love you make love you make love and then that fucking bridge every time i get hot you want to cool down every time i get high you want to say you say you want to come down you see it's enough in fact it's too much every time i want to boom get down boom get down get down make love i mean this song was so fucking ill nine inch nails um actually covered this song um on their b-side to their single sin very dope cover too from nine inch nails um i definitely got it we have to talk about their first album the pretty hate machine and everything like that too because i feel like that album yeah. is definitely underrated especially when it comes to like the whole alternative rock because everybody wants to say downward spiral which i love downward spiral that's my favorite but pretty hate machine too is just so fucking ill so um get down make love very 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 dope track right here my favorite off this album it was it was dope you know he had it like a real space beat to it you know the guitar play was good definitely like um it, good. it don't even sound like it was it was made in 1977 it sounded like some shit like daft punk what a fucking did too and stuff like that too you know what i'm saying shit. Right. um next, next track sleeping on the sidewalk this track right here was a very interesting track you know what i'm saying it had like a very bluesy rockability track um sung by like um brian brian may you know what i'm saying um pretty cool track 
you know what I'm saying? It just pretty much deals like a rags and riches kind of story and everything like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, I only think it fit the album, but again, it's Queen, so they would definitely do whatever it does musically and shit. Yeah, real bluesy. Had a nice beat, nice guitar play on it. Definitely. All right. Um, next song we got is Who Needs You. Now, this one right here is a very dope track right here. Again, written again by um John Deacon. You know what I'm saying? And this one definitely has a more laid back, melodic kind of feel to it. You know what I'm saying? Which he definitely was experimenting a bit more when he started with this album and everything like that too. So this is another personal favorite of mine. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And also Brian May was also playing the Maracas and Freddie Mercury was playing the cowboy or cowbell on this track. This sounds like it, it was made, it sounds like a modern day track. Right. You know, it's melodic, it had a nice beat. You know, it was, it was more like pop, had like a pop radio sound to it, you know, something that Maroon, old Maroon 5 would have did, or Train, you know. Right. Yeah, this one is definitely a favorite of mine. Um, track number 10 is Late. This one, again, was another cool track right here. This was done by Brian May, one of my favorite guitarists he's ever done. With this one and this actually was like uh one of those theatrical queen songs that they were famous for you know what i'm saying it's talking about like a love, love affair gone wrong and everything like that too you know i mean this one was not bad this is actually a vintage queen song and everything like that too so this one was all right this was good you know i love the beat the guitar riff on it you know get ready singing you know now that you tell me you're leaving. I just can't believe it's true. You know that I love you. Don't tell me that we are through. But this was this was like a, you know, uh, him telling his, his, uh, his significant other, you know, it's not over. I still love you. I need you. You know. Definitely. And the last track is called My Melancholy Blues. This was penned by um, Freddie Mercury. Um, this pretty much was one of those lullaby theatrical songs, again, that Queen was known for, but this actually fared better than the Brian May one, in my personal opinion. It is very bluesy with a little bit of jazz into it. I felt like Freddie Mercury definitely did his thing vocally on this one, so not bad track. Yeah, this was different. It was jazzy. You know, uh, you basically just have pianos and a nice little bass underlying the track, and, and Freddie was singing. And you know, I think he was on this Frank Sinatra shit on this one. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. All right. So, overall, a very great album from Queen. This actually might be my third favorite album from the band, if you ask me. This they definitely reclaim like that hard rock reputation with this album do i feel like everything was perfect on this album um i'm not gonna hold you the brian may songs the brian may pen songs was a bit kind of inconsistent in my personal opinion not saying that they were bad i just didn't feel like they didn't really fit the album but like again queen was always known for like going pushing the envelope and being more versatile and your favorite rock band. Um, I definitely felt like John Deacon songwriting was the best when it came to this album. Freddie Mercury sounded more nasty and so aggressive. I like more aggressive Freddie than theatrical Freddie. So this one is definitely a personal favorite of mine. Um, I'm gonna definitely give this album a 4.5 out of five. This is a classic, classic, classic rock album. Definitely among my favorite rock albums in 1977, which I feel like is among my favorite years of rock music. So, yeah, that's a rock classic right there. This is my favorite one. I think the songs were better, had better production, bigger hits. 
you know, we will rock you. We are the champions. Everybody should know that. You know, it's late. Spread your wings. You know, fight from the inside. I love all the songs. Man. To me, it's five mics. Definitely. Yeah, man. This is definitely a dope album from them. And honestly, the next album, once we get to jazz, hate to say it, but that might be their first misstep. But stay, stay tuned on that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, what time is it? We finished this album earlier than I expected and shit. Shit. I'm gonna stay on for probably a good 15. But yeah, this whole, so next Sunday, we're not actually gonna do a Queen album. We're gonna probably push that into Monday. And we're gonna start off with our top 100 rock albums. Which I can't wait for this one. Yes. Which I keep I kept pushing this shit back. <laughs> Cause I was like, I thought this was gonna be harder than a motherfucker, but honestly, I was just like, you know what? I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Cause when it came to the hip hop and R and B ones, those were the hard ones. I was like shit. Well, hip hop, you had to do like 150, 150, 140, whatever. You saw the Freak Make documentary yet? No, I didn't watch it yet. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch that tonight. Yeah, that shit wild as fuck. I know this Tuesday, but I can't wait for this collection video. I was just talking to Mike about that um, a couple of hours ago, man. He said he's ready for this shit. Yeah. I think it's going to be you, me, Ash, Mike, and I think Eric is going to join us. Hopefully, maybe Killer Tate if he answers his damn DM. Right. Knowing him, you'll answer me like 4 a.m. and shit. That's what niggas do. You know. See, that's the thing about these collection videos and stuff like that. No drama and shit like that. Nobody bringing their bullshit. Just niggas just showing off shit. And also, I stopped doing the surprise reviews for the collection videos because it was just like taking too much time. I remember when we did the uh, best of both worlds, I was just like, dang, God damn, I had to pick a long ass album. Shit. Yeah, man, don't you? Pick an EP next time or something. <laughs> yeah. It's short. I remember when we did that Tyrese album when he was a rapper. Oh God, that double album? That was yeah, cool. Black, Black Tie. That was a collection night too? Nah, nah. Oh, that was terrible. <clears throat> and this nigga Tyrese, he was just supporting Diddy the other day. Like while everybody makes mistakes. Man, and Tyrese probably got was molested by Diddy too. That's why he was back. I'm not gonna go that far. Yeah, I won't put it past him. He he's done a lot of weird shit online. Remember, he got caught shaving his, his girl's cooch on on Instagram. When was this? That was, I think, last year, year before last. Yeah, he was on Instagram live shaving his ghost coach. That's disgusting. <laughs> and and how they don't ban him for that? I don't get that shit. If it was in any of us, we would. It was. They would get rid of our our page. 
That's what money can do for motherfucker. Shit. Yeah. You said Slim Thug defended Diddy? Oh, wow. Slim Thug, you probably got molested also down in Texas. Anybody that's running to Diddy's aid, I'm, I, you got a question in them now. Is like 2020 part two. They know they they going after other people. Clive, Crip Keeper Clive. I think he's a part of it. He's probably like the ringmaster of this shit. You know. And now you calling him Crip Keeper. A lot of other people are part of this shit. Did you see um immortal techniques posted about C Ray Waltz? No, what do you say? Pretty much that he was accused of doing his predatory acts. That's all I want to say. Oh yeah, him too. Yeah, yeah. yeah check the, out the whole industry. The whole industry got a bunch of pedophiles. Sully Cell, Diddy. Oh. Or Kelly, who, who's next? Dan Schneider, don't forget him. Dan Schneider, keep a quiet. Jay Z, nah, not Jay Z. Jay Z name name was mentioned more than once. He might be a, a ringleader also. Him and Clive. I don't, I don't believe that. Yeah. I'm not, I, I don't defend none of these niggas. You ain't inside their bedroom. You don't know what they're doing. These niggas could be could be Illuminati members for all we know. I ain't defending none of them. Jay Z name is mentioned. He got to look. He looked with a side eye also. You know what I'm saying? There, there's a there's a fucking psychic named Sloan Sloan Bella. She she said it was Jay Z, and she she predicts Jay Z will go down in ten years, twenty thirty six. I don't believe in psychics. Sometimes yeah. psychics can be on everything she said came out came came out true already. He said Diddy would be caught by Easter. It's already Easter. He got caught. You know what I'm saying? The, the shit with Aaliyah, there's, there's shit going on with Aaliyah, like they were passing Aaliyah around like a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Daisy was with her, Dame Dash was with her, R. Kelly was with her. Like, who else? Who, who didn't have Aaliyah? I just don't believe everything sometimes. That's what yeah. I mean. That's all I'm gonna say. The, the record industry is is showing people, it's it's all about Illuminati and and, and the shit that they do. You know what I'm saying? Been told y'all this nigga wasn't no legend. Y'all want to sit up there and defend the motherfucker. Any any chances of him being in the Rock Hall of Fame is gone. They're not honoring him. That's not happening no more. Man, I've seen them put hella niggas the dumb shit. No, they're not gonna honor him in the in the, in the Rock and Hall of Fame. They don't. Know, they already don't want rap in the Hall of Fame. So they're not definitely not gonna honor a predator in that shit. You know what I'm saying? The hip hop museum. I don't even think they're gonna have any artifacts from it. What 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 artifact would you put of Diddy in the hip hop museum right now? All that shit is tainted. All that shit is tainted. You know what I'm saying? He lost that. He lost that shit now. So he, he's not a legend, like I've been saying. 
Y'all worship this motherfucker. Y'all bought all his albums. You, you bought all his shit. On backtrack now, you all support her. You made that nigga who he was. You know what I'm saying? The, the money and the fame is why these niggas do what they do. I mean, y'all sit up there and y'all go to your fucking concerts and support their asses and shit. And, and buy their fucking clothes and shit. Burn all them Diddy CDs. Burn, burn all, all that Bow Wow shit that you got. Buy some real shit for once. You know, wow, been I saying it for you yeah, forever. I guess people, people, they death or some shit. What does Bow Wow have to do with it? Because yeah. I'm, I'm, he probably got molested. I'm guaranteeing you he got wow. molested. Justin Bieber got molested. Usher got molested. I'm pretty sure we already heard about Bow Wow getting molested by Jermaine Dupree in back of the limo many years ago. Everybody know about that. No, oh, what was this? Hold on. You didn't, you didn't hear about that? You know about that. Nah, you heard no. about that. You didn't hear about Bow Wow getting molested when he was younger in the back of the limousine? No. Nope. And, and and Jermaine Dupree was watching? I believe that. I believe that. I, I ain't putting it past none of these motherfuckers no more. Any rumor you heard from 20 years ago, that shit might be true now. Bow Wow could have been a sacrifice for all you know. You know, all them, all them niggas know shit, yo. Danny D. Kane, Craig Mack, all them niggas know shit. They even asked Ness. There's a video with Ness now, and they asking Ness about what happened, and he saw shit. All of them saw shit. They refused to talk. This is why this nigga got away with shit for many years, because people was afraid of him. He bust Drake's ass. He bust J. Cole's ass. They didn't want to talk. Some of your favorite rappers that, that y'all look up to, they he, he had something to do with them. Oh, J. Cole said it in the song. Yeah, that he got he got his ass beat by Diddy. Drake he Drake had a black eye by this nigga. I, I don't fucking have a pretty file beat your ass. This is another reason why Drake is soft. You can't be considered one of the best if you have a, a, a fucking predator out there beating your ass. <laughs> Sorry, you can't be in my top ten. All them artists know about that shit. Who knows what Biggie knew? He could have, he could have put the hit on. He could have put the hit on Biggie for all we know. Could have been him that killed Biggie. Y'all looking at Shaq Knight. Y'all looking at Orlando Jones. Could have been fucking is his boss that put the hit out on him. Craig Mack dead. Black Rob dead. He ain't go see him. It is a legend though. He made what Mark Nash said. He made eight hundred million. I don't give a fuck how much money he made. He's a predator. I've been saying that shit. Y'all y'all want to sit up there and praise this nigga and worship him like, like the fucking Illuminati member that he is. Bought all his albums. How many albums he bought from him, uh, Q? The whole damn collection? You enable that nigga. Sure, I got my puppy album for free. <laughs> Burn that shit. Nobody, nobody's honoring those albums. Those albums ain't classic. Burn all that shit. Do a live stream and burn all that shit on the live stream. None of that shit is worth anything now anyway. Nobody, nobody's buying Diddy albums. If he dropped dead now, nobody's rushing to buy that shit. I'm not honoring that nigga. We honor true legends here, like Nipsey Hussle. That's who we honor. That's who we honor right here. A legend. We don't honor no damn Diddy. You enabled him. You bought all his albums, all them shitty albums from the 2000s. Press play, the saga continues. You bought all that shit. So you was, you was funding this nigga being a predator. 
Don't backtrack now. Oh, I don't like Diddy. You fought all them niggas. You fucking came on Reggie's channel and, and showed off showed all those Diddy albums. You a Diddy supporter. That's that's what it is. That's what hip hop means to you. Is Pac or, or and is Diddy? I remember you said I, I ain't spend money on no fucking Sean John. I ain't never rocking Sean John in my life. Fuck Sean John. I ain't go see that nigga in, in, in fucking concert. No way out tours and all that. I was I wasn't in for that. I skipped those. Okay, went to see Wu Tang. Real legends. That's what I went to see. Fat Joe, big pun. Burn them shits. Do a live stream and burn them shits. Burn it down. <laughs> burn it down. Like. What did what Ruby D say and do the right thing? Burn it down. I ain't, I ain't spend money and buy Ciroc. I don't drink. And if I do, I wasn't buying Ciroc. Don't make that nigga rich. That's why he got away with the shit that he did for all these years. Do people still want drink champs? I mean, yeah, they, he, well, he, they said that he sold he sold his shit a revolt or whatever. So he don't have no involvement in it? I don't know. I knew that was coming. I don't watch drink champs on the regular because nobody talk too damn much and that should go for four hours long. Laughing ass. Nigga. I don't need to see a, a four hour interview with Cormega. It's not that serious. There's nothing for Cormega could, could say for four hours that I'm interested in, in hearing. That nigga talk way too much. He interrupt his, his, his guests all the damn time. Nobody say shit about it. Where BJ at? BJ, BJ is a number one supporter of Diddy. He's another one. Why are you sending me all this Diddy shit in, in my DM and you were supporting the nigga? I don't get it. I haven't heard from that nigga in a minute. <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I, I've been told you all this nigga wasn't shit. Y'all gonna sit up there and, and, and say, try you wrong, you hating, blah, blah, blah. Now you see what I'm talking about. Now you all see what I'm talking about. And when Jay-Z get caught, then what y'all gonna say? Y'all still gonna have Jay-Z in your top five all time? Because he gonna get caught. They all know each other. Jay-Z, R. Kelly, Diddy, Andre Harrell, they all know each other. Clive Davis, it's like a fucking Illuminati clip going on. They all getting caught one by one. Remember I tell you, when, when Clive Davis get caught, and Quincy Jones, his name came up also. That old pedophile motherfucker. When he get caught, and when Jay Z get caught, remember who who said it here. Remember who said it. It's gonna happen. I'm not in the industry, so I can say what the fuck I want. I, don't, I ain't afraid of these niggas. Quincy, Quincy Olas Jones, the man that crafted Thriller and Bad, all the off the wall, all the shit from Michael. Who, who, who would know? Who would think that he's a Olas pedophile with a steel plate in his fucking head? What you, what you think about that, Reg? Because his name came up in that shit too. Shit. Sure. I don't even know what to think about that to be real with you. Yeah, his name came up in that shit too. They gonna catch him. It might be too late because he 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 old. I don't know if he's gonna spend the next five years in, in a jail cell. He old, so you know what I'm saying? EPD gonna talk because he don't want to spend the rest of his life incarcerated. He gonna talk and he gonna spill the beans on pop. And we're gonna find out that Puff gave him a million dollars to put a hit out on Pac. 
And when you connect the dots, Biggie's murder is connected to Pac's murder. That's how he's going to get caught. That's how they're going to catch him. In that same year, your first album, like the biggest album in the world. Exactly. And, and he didn't he didn't take no time off to grieve. Now, if, if I have a true friend, if, if one of my friends get gunned down, you think I'm, my, my last thought is to go in the studio and make a tribute out a song and then come out with an album? I'm, I'm going to be sure. like, I'm going to be depressed so and I'm going to be grieving. This nigga didn't waste no time. He went into the studio to make I'll Be Missing You. Sure and then dropped the that album, and then and then he thought he was big shit, the the king of hip hop. And or uh, I remember that Rolling Stone cover when he had the mint coat on, talking about he was the king of hip hop. I mean, yeah, he was never no king of hip hop. Never. Remember that, remember that Rolling Stone cover where he was also with Jerry Seinfeld and shit. Right. He was never no king of hip hop. We never called him the king of hip hop over here. Why you never? Do? Not not over Nas. Damn sure not better than Nas. Damn sure not better than Jay. His his Illuminati counterpart. No, not not better than Rock him. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know where he oh. thought he was the king of hip hop at. You know, it's it's time people wake up and stop being stupid and, and, and acting like this nigga was was so great for hip hop. If anything, he, he had a part to play in, in ruining the shit and making it go mainstream the, the way that it is now. Nigga, you gonna buy Diddy album when it drop tomorrow? Stop playing. You know you love Pop. That's one of your favorites. If he if we drop no way out to tomorrow, you gonna support it? Hmm. Hey, if if that's your just keep it real. If that's your boy, just say that's your boy. You fuck with Bow Wow and Diddy and Two Chains. That's your that's your people's. That's who you, that's, that's what hip hop is to you. That's cool. That's not what hip hop is for me though. I'm about to end this off right here. Well, this has been a fun ass review. Right, let me make a few announcements. So this Tuesday is gonna be an upcoming collection video. That's going to be 1230 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So we got, I already got my albums ready and shit. Just to let y'all know. Exactly. You, you expect people to come to, at 1230? They're going to be sleeping. Yeah, I get off at midnight. You said 1230. I know. I get off at midnight. Oh. Because actually it's off Tuesday and Wednesday too. Nigga, you know you're gonna be up. Stop playing. Well, I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about like the she and them who those who want to join. The she is gonna be up. Eric's gonna be up. Yeah. All right. Also, this Wednesday, it's gonna be Beanie Siegel, the becoming album for Beanie, Beanie Wednesday. That's gonna be cool. night. My favorite album from Beanie Siegel. Yes. Friday, we're gonna do the Purple Rain movie review at 6 p.m. That's gonna be fun, fun, fun. And then we also gonna do the KMD double review, which was requested by Christian. That's gonna be eleven thirty p.m. All right, got a dope week coming up. Try, yes. Yeah, is anything you gotta say before we head out? Saturday and Sunday, I'm dropping, doing a WrestleMania live stream. Mike, if you're still here, you gotta be a part of that man with the wrestling junkies. We're gonna talk about night one of WrestleMania forty, and then night two on Sunday. Tomorrow I'm going to Monday Night Raw with The Rock returning with Roman. It's going to be epic. Can't wait. WrestleMania week is here. Let's go. Yeah, y'all can have that. Yeah. And just to let you guys know, next week when we do our Queen review, we're not going to do the Queen review Sunday. We're going to actually do that Monday so we can make time for our first part of our top 100 rock albums. And we're going to do jazz next week from Queen. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting album to talk about. And after Queen, that's when we're going to drop our first surprise artist and stuff like that, too. So, who's that? If I tell you, it's not going to be a surprise. Do you know who it is? I do. I'll, I'll put it on a private chat, but don't say it out loud. Surprise review. 
Hopefully it's good. Oh yes. Well we doing we doing all this stuff or just we already did something with that audience, right? Yeah, we did the first album. Okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna double check if we did a particular album because I, I wanna send you the list um this probably tonight or tomorrow Ooh. and everything like that too, because this one I can't wait to talk about. My this is the first surprise artist because the other surprise artist is gonna be after we do um uh, talking heads after this particular one. I just text you that one too. Nice. Okay. Oh yes, they they definitely need need their flowers because people forget about them. And yeah. and and you know some of these hip hop heads think that you know old school hip hop started in the nineties and it didn't. We, they yeah. totally skip a whole decade before, but they definitely got to get saluted. Yes, I definitely can't wait to talk about them too. You know what I'm saying? So that's gonna be a fun one. But without further ado, thank y'all so much for watching. Appreciate this try as usual. Yeah. Use the word for Queen. That's still in print. So if you guys can find it, must have in your collection. And I'll see y'all later. Peace. Peace.